Sometimes you need a small, fine, delicate saw. Other times you need a bigger one. But then there are times when you've just got to get serious. Well, g'day. If you're new to my channel and you're here for the first time, welcome. My name is Stuart Chignall. Uh, and if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. And um, uh, well, I guess, I guess you, you come back because you like my stuff. So I really appreciate that because <sighs> I have a, fun, a lot of fun doing it. This is how my Kotaba saw arrived in this, um, what I think is Japanese cedar um, cover. I've been meaning to sharpen up and use this Kotaba saw for a long, long time. Uh, and in a previous video, I made a saw vise so I could do just that. I had a bit of a practice with a saw that was a bit, you know, dodgy. And so if I mucked it up, I wasn't too, gonna be too, um, too worried. But this saw, I really care about. So, I'm a little bit nervous. I really don't wanna stuff this saw up. It, it is a beautiful, beautiful saw, handmade, quite old, um, excellent condition. I could probably get away with just using it as it is, but the best time to sharpen tools is before you need to. So I'm going to give it a bit of a touch up, a bit of a tickle, and um, then put it to work. So in the previous video I did, I um, addressed the tops of the teeth to bring them into level. I don't think we need to do that. Now if we look here, this is not a simple grind. And I see a number of different things going on here. First is that this tooth here doesn't have any um, angle on it. That, that, fa that flat face there is, is perpendicular to the angle of the cut. So that's just a straight chisel cut that I'm guessing is meant to deepen the kerf. This one here is ground on both sides at an angle, but then also see this little flat bit here. That's the thing that is quite common with Japanese saws, um, and it just aids, re it helps um, strengthen this edge. A secondary bevel that you would find on um, a western chisel or a western plane, where secondary bevels are often used, but less so in Japanese planes and chisels. But in their saws. Um, that's the opposite side, obviously. Okay, so we got four tooth, four teeth that are designed to cut the sides and depth of the kerf, and then one tooth which is chiseling it out. And it's interesting that that's probably going to be the one tooth that produces the most sawdust, and that's where the big gullet is. That is really well thought out. I'm wondering if the problem I'm having is that that file's blunt. Oh yeah, that's better. Oh. <laughs> okay, yeah. Use a sharp file. Life will be easier. And interestingly, that's the modern file that I got with my fold-out uh, Katana Boy saw, um, whereas this is a vintage blade. Um, so that hasn't, I've barely used that and it's already blunt. Whereas, um, well, we'll see how long this lasts, but it's just, yeah, that's um, pretty disappointing with that file. What I'm noticing is that these teeth grinds are coming in at an angle. So that means I can't come across, I can't sharpen like this. I've really got to sharpen like that. Which means a, a modification I might need to make to this saw uh, vise is chamfering this edge so I can drop the um, drop the saw down to an angle while still having the tooth close to the um, close to the vise. Because to get that 
angle, I've really got to come down to here, which means I've got to have the saw tooth all the way up there, which means it's a bit unsupported. And I think I'm, I'm getting a bit of vibration. Um, if you look at, you know, the weight of that saw is all out there out of the clamp, yet it's still, it's still holding it fabulously. That's just, yeah, it's great. So I'm pleased with that, it's working well. Now, it just occurred to me that Paul Sellers, he does put a secondary bevel on some of his saws. Uh, and if you haven't seen any of Paul Sellers stuff, He's a master woodworker, but he's also an excellent teacher. Oh, we're going to take a bit more off this. There was a bit of rust on that tooth. I should have taken a before shot. And you can see those black spots there. That's pitting. Now those pits, some of those are near the cutting edge. So if we were fully reconditioning this tooth, we'd want to grind that back until those pits had gone. But if we did that, then that tooth would be considerably lower than the other tooth. So since we're reconditioning a saw, not reconditioning te the teeth, uh, we've got to sort of keep that in mind. All right, that's all done. Uh, now, obviously, there's some there's some damage to the saw I couldn't fix, like the, this. Well, I, look. I could fix it, like this point that's taken off here. I could, I could grind all the points down to that level and fix that, but that would take a hell of a long time and would drastically shorten the life of the saw. So what I'm gonna do, because I'm planning to keep this saw for the rest of my life, um, in about, I don't know, five years or so, I'll have got that tooth back into service. Now there are some burrs um, from the filing. If you see, the, see that glint there on my finger, that's the burr. And in a, I don't know what the treatment is for a Japanese saw and a traditional saw. Uh, if it was a chainsaw, what I would do is I would do a longitudinal cut or a rip cut um, to clean those burrs off and gently um, before I got stuck into a piece of wood. But I don't know what you're supposed to do with a handsaw. Uh, yeah, so if anyone can tell me, um, I would really appreciate that. If it's not obvious, I am learning how to sharpen saws. But I can tell you that saw looked pretty good before I started. But now, even with my rudimentary skills, that, that oh. is sharp. Like, that is really sharp. But the proof's in the pudding. It's time to put it to work and see how she cuts. back to get rid of these um, these checks much better if you do this when the wood is totally green if we'd done this green we could have got four pans out of this log rather than just the two that we're going to get out getting started could be tricky Grabbing on that point, and then cutting too fresh. Well, the good news is that um, that I cut enough off the end 
to get past all those end checks um, so I don't have to cut it again <sighs> yeah very, very relieved about that the bad news is I really need to get better at my sharpening because that was so hard um, so much harder than it should have been and I think I know why so the two things were going wrong one is that the tooth heights are all different so at the start you know how I said I didn't need to dress the teeth back to a common height well that shortcut yeah it was a bad idea um, that leading that's not really a tooth um, in a chainsaw you call that a raker and it's, it's a basically a piece of metal just that's the same height as the teeth or a little bit actually it's a little bit shorter than the teeth which helps set the depth of cut um, that you can make with the teeth so that should be a little bit lower than the teeth the next thing is if you look at all those variations in the heights there some of those teeth are cutting and well, actually none of those teeth are cutting the first cut is that really aggressive tooth that's you know meant to be a chisel uh, ideally that shouldn't be touching anything until the sides of the curve have been cut by these teeth so the fact that this is the tallest tooth is well why it was grabbing yep again why it was grabbing in fact uh, here we get a bit more no why it was great yeah so all those that that straight chisel teeth they need to be if anything a tad shorter than uh, the side cutting teeth uh, not a much we're talking like a poof teeth a tiny tiny amount shorter but they it would be better if they were a tiny bit shorter in fact basically most of them here are longer which is bad second thing although possibly the same thing just a different aspect of it is that even though bear in mind that the log is on an angle we've still got an angle cut and that's because one side of the saw was cutting more than the other in this case the left side was cutting more than the other which means that the, 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 the saw cut drifts to the left now I managed to hold it straight once I saw it was happening but I couldn't straighten it up um, it just if I hadn't um, if I hadn't held it straight it would have had a slight curve to it but as it is it's a pretty straight cut just on an angle which isn't great now in part that angled cut is going to be due to uh, the different teeth the different teeth heights um, but it's also probably going to be because I haven't got the set quite right um, if it's cutting more to the left it would mean I've got more set on the left hand side so um, if I wasn't going to completely redo this saw what I would do is I would either remove a little bit of set from the left hand side or I'd add a bit more to the right um, but <laughs> I'm a beginner so if there's anyone out there more experienced and you've got any pointers that you can see on how I should do this better um, then I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments and if there's anyone else watching this who doesn't know what they're doing either I'm sure they would appreciate your help as much as me however no comments necessary on the fact that I need a more stable thing to cut this on because another contributing problem to why that was so hard is the bloody thing was moving around so much because the saw horse was loose so added to the uh, many things that I have to do is um, uh, build, a better, build another saw horse. Uh, this one's all right for chainsaw work, but for hand tool work, no. I need something that's much more rigid, much more solid, and for big stuff like this, damn heavy, so the thing doesn't move. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna finish cutting this with my uh, Katana Boy uh, folding saw. Um, forgive me, uh, but I don't have time to go back and resharpen that and have another crack at it. Um, I just gotta get it done. Uh, look, it's taking all my self-discipline uh, not to pull the chainsaw out and cut the other end. But I'm going to be a good boy. It's going to be done by hand because uh, I really want to plug this, uh, play, uh, put this video in the unplugged, uh, in an unplugged woodworking group. So can't use the chainsaw. Well, not that a chainsaw is plugged in. So maybe I could use the chainsaw. I think I get yelled at. But anyway, if you like this, um, please like the video um, and this block of wood that i'm cutting is going to be used in the medieval prospecting video series i'm going to be making two uh, medieval gold pans out of it uh, with um, some other cool tools some of which you saw earlier in the video 
Um, so if you want to see that when the video comes out, oh, hang on, no, the video's already come out. Um, so if you want to see that, oh, there'll be a link somewhere, go back to it. Um, and if you want to see some of the other cool stuff I do, make sure you subscribe, because uh, I got stuff coming out all the time. Uh, so yeah, hope you enjoy.